Hello again Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 friends. The video today is going to be on editing an existing airport. When you decide to edit an existing airport you need a plan. What do you want to change? Keep in mind that runways, taxiways, ramps, gates, tarmacs, those are all controlled through ATC and to change those or add to those you must edit the airport. If your goal is simply to add hangars and add to the aesthetics of the airport, that can be done in a scenery project. You do not have to edit an airport to add scenery objects. But today we're going to be editing the airport because I'm going to be changing the runways. So the plan is to redo the two runways at the airport and to add a helipad. In addition to that, I will add some scenery items also. As I said before, scenery can be done with a simple scenery project, but you can also add scenery when you're editing an airport. And with that out of the way, I will begin. Greetings and welcome to Patriot 6. I make tutorial videos for scenery building or modifications to scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 utilizing SDK. Different people at different levels of skill see these videos. You may be here because you're curious or you may already know the basics of scenery building. It is impossible for me to know who will click on a video. Because of the broad range of folks that view the videos, I include the basics in each video. This and all new videos will be built in chapters. You can find the chapters of the video in the description below. In addition, you can see the chapters on the video timeline if you want to skip the basic chapters. The processes for building scenery downloading SDK and downloading samples is constantly changing. The video that I am redoing at this moment is just a few months old and I'm already having to make another video. But I will promise you as long as I'm able to make videos I will keep my videos up to date because it does you no good if I make a video and let it set for several years, walk away and never update anything. So know that this video is being recorded on November the 28th, 2022. So to build scenery in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, a couple things must occur first. The first step is we have to go into developers mode and then we must download SDK and although it's not mandatory that you download the samples I recommend that you download the samples. If you do not download the samples then you have to find the samples from other places. So to begin we're going to go into developers mode and we'll do that by going to options and once we're at options we want to tick on General Options. We want to drop down to Developers. Tick on Apply and Save. And once we're in Developers mode, a new menu will appear at the top. In my videos, I refer to this menu as the dev menu, or sometimes I may call it the developer's menu. But from the dev menu, go to help and drop down to SDK installer core and tick. And when you do that, your browser will open up and download SDK. 
and once you have SDK downloaded, you want to double click like any other executable file and start the installation process. And you continue on with the process. Now, since I already have SDK, I'm going to stop the process. Again, on the Dev menu, you want to go up to Help, and you want to drop down to Samples, and you want to download the very first thing you see, Samples. And again, your browser will start to download the samples. And just like before, you want to go to the Download, find the executable file, and start the installation. I'm going to tick Next. And when you tick Next, this application will automatically install the samples inside the SDK folder. So let me quickly walk through finding the samples. You want to open the SDK folder. You will see a folder that says Samples. You want to open this folder. And at this point, you will see three folders. To get to the sample you're most likely to need, the Simple Scenery folder, you want to open the Dev Mode Projects folder. And then you want to drop down to Sceneries and open. And down here at the bottom, you will find Simple Scenery. I recommend that you make a copy of the Simple Scenery and drop the Simple Scenery into the working folder that you will be using to build Scenery. One last thing I would like to mention is when you are in developer's mode, you will see SDK updates on the top right hand of your screen. As long as this button is blue, you are fine. If this button ever turns yellow, it means that the SDK has an update and you need to go grab the update. And getting SDK updates is the same process that I showed you in the installation. And it is very possible that you will still see this as yellow after you update the SDK. And to solve that, you can tick on this button and open up this SDK window and find the refresh button and tick the refresh button. And then the SDK icon at the top right of your screen will no longer be yellow. Let's talk about the tools that we need to build scenery. In most projects, it's very simple. The items which you use to build scenery are typically in your scenery library already. There are exceptions though. If you are bringing a 3D model into the sim, that would be an exception. If you are using the Earth to MSFS tool, that is another exception. And on occasion, you may need a text editor. I will explain the reason for the text editor once I do a video where the text editor is needed. For starters, put a folder on your desktop that you will use as your working scenery folder. I have one here and I will show you what I have in it. All I have in it is a simple scenery folder I downloaded from SDK, and I do have a thumbnail. In the simple scenery folders that you download through this version of SDK, a thumbnail is not mandatory because there is a standard thumbnail within the scenery package. However, on all of my projects, I choose to have a thumbnail, and it's your choice where you want to go with a standard thumbnail in the scenery folder or if you want your own. 
If you decide you want to make your own thumbnail, the thumbnail has to be the precise dimensions of this thumbnail I use, 412 by 170 pixels. No other size will work. So if you build your own thumbnail, please keep this rule in mind. Of course, the first step is to be in developer's mode, as I explained in the previous tutorials. And in developer's mode, I'm ready now to go to the location. I'm going to be working on KMQY, Smyrna Airport. And I'll park my airplane over here out of the way. With the departure set, I will now fly. And now on the ground, I'm going to tick ready to fly. I'm going up to the dev menu, camera, and tick on developer camera. The next step is I'm going to the developer menu, to tools, and open the project editor. And with the project editor open and the inspector window up, I'm ready to begin. If you do not see the inspector window, you can go to view on the project editor and tick on inspector. When you edit an airport or build an airport, it works differently than going in and adding scenery. Normally when you add scenery, you have your scenery folder prepared in advance. But when you edit or build an airport, you go a different route. So on the project editor, I'm going to tick new project. And the project name is going to be KMQY. And I want to make sure that the project is going to be saved in the folder which I want. So I will tick here on projects folder. And navigate to the working scenery folder. And once I find the working scenery folder, I will select the folder. And now we're good to go. The next step is to create new project. And on the publishing side, I'm not interested in publishing, so I'm simply going to tick package. And next, on the wizard selection, I'm going to select airport and on the display title, I will type in Smyrna Airport. And once the airport creation window comes up, I want to override an existing airport. And the coordinates are already in here for me. So I don't have to change any of that. And I'm simply going to tick create airport. And once I tick create airport, the inspector comes up with the information. The top part of the inspector is the package name, and it's going to be Patriot 6 Airport KMQY Smyrna. Now you can edit this if you wish, but I'm going to leave it as it is. This section here is for the content manager. So once a package is complete, we will see Smyrna Airport. The creator is Patriot 6. I'm going to add KMQY for the content manager title. The next item is to add a thumbnail. I'm going to use the thumbnail I typically use. However, if you wanted to, you could have a picture of the airport as long as you size it the mandatory size as I stated in the tutorials. And I have a thumbnail ready to go. Tick on it and open. And once the inspector is filled out to my satisfaction, the next step is to build the package. And of course you want to tick yes on the dialog box. The preliminary package is built and we have no additional errors. So I can exit out of the console. And the next step is to go down to the project editor. And here you see the package name. I want to tick on the arrow. Go down to scenery BGL. 
back up to the inspector and load in editor. And once loaded in editor, I see the scenery editor, I see the gizmo, and I see the objects. In addition to that, over on a side window, I had the material editor. If you do not see the objects window or the gizmo down on the scenery editor, you tick view, tick objects, and tick gizmo. If you do not see the material editor, you want to go up to the dev menu, tick on tools, and tick on material editor. On the scenery editor, I'm going to tick on Smyrna. I'm going up to view on the scenery editor and tick properties. At this time, we must decide on what we want to change. As I stated earlier in this video, I'm only going to redo the runways. But down here on the properties, you'll see the delete command. And these are all of the items that you can delete and rebuild. So I'm going down to delete runways since that's all I'm changing. And the runways are now deleted. If you wanted to delete taxiways, you could and redo the taxiways. That is a totally different video and one in which I'm willing to do should someone want me to make that video. Building taxiways is convoluted and a very time consuming process. So I'm not going to change the taxiways in this airport because they are fine. So now let's jump in and add our first runway. At the Smyrna airport, you have two runways. You have 32 and 14 and you have 19 and one. So I will start with 32. On the objects window, I'm going to swap from scenery to runways. And I'm going down and find 32. And I'm going to add. One of the first things you'll notice is even though this runway is designated as 32, they're not perfect by any means. So there's a couple of ways that you can get the runway length. You can simply drag the arrows. Or you can have a known runway length and type it in. This original runway is 2450.6 meters. So on the properties window, I will go to configuration and I will type in the known length of this runway, 2450.6 meters. Now to line it up, we're going to use the gizmo. I'm going to tick on rotate and get this runway lined up with the original runway as close as possible. And it can be a little tedious. I think that's pretty close. Let me look at the other end. Now with the runway heading in the correct direction, I'm going to change the width of this runway. In real life, the runway is 45 meters wide. I'm going to change it to 65 meters and give me some more width. And now I'm going to change the materials. To change the materials, you go to the properties window down to materials and tick on materials. Then you bring up your material editor. If I wanted to go with concrete, I have several options of concrete. I could go with square white and I'll move that over to the materials. And there's your square white runway. 
However, I'm going to go with Asobo Asphalt. And I'm going with Asobo Asphalt Black. Move it over to the materials. And there we go. With the materials done, I can tick off. And let's look at markings. I'm going to add all of the markings. So I will add edge markings. Threshold markings. I'm not in Europe, so I don't have to tick this. Fixed distance markings. Touch down markings. I'm going to add a center dash line. I'm going to add the number designators at the end. I'm going to add the precision markings. So I'm satisfied with the markings, so I will take markings off and I will go to lights. And in the center, I'm going to go with high. And on the edge, I'm also going to high. And why not the center line red? And now I want to edit the runway starts. So on the properties window, I'm going to tick on runway start. And I will tick on edit position. And we see the arrow is pointing in this direction, so this needs to be on the 32 end. And on the secondary start, I'm going to tick Edit Position on the Properties window. And now I have the location. And now we will add the second runway, which is 1 and 19. On the objects window, I will select 0, 1 and add. And obviously, right off the bat, you see that this runway is truly not facing 1 and 19. That is normal. This runway is 1,691 meters. So up in configuration on the properties window. I'm going to add 1,691 meters. Now once again to the gizmo in translate. Move it into position. And with the gizmo, I'm going to rotate. Rotate and translate until I get it into place. And I think I have it. So again, I'm going to change the materials. On the properties window, again, tick materials. And I'm going to use the same black that I used on the first runway. And drag it over into materials. Now with the markings. 
I'm going to tick all as I did earlier. Satisfied with the markings, I'm going to lights and I'm going to do center high, edge high, but I'm not going to make the center red on this one. And now is probably a good time to save the scenery. And you will notice over here in the scenery editor, you can swap between the runways by just ticking on the runway you want. So I'm going to tick on 0, 1, and 19. And now I'm going to edit the runway starts as I did with the first one. And if for whatever reason you want to change the heading of the start, you can do that from the gizmo, just like any other object. And rotate it a bit, and maybe that's better. And I'm going to edit the secondary start. And here it is. It looks pretty good, so I will leave that alone. So we now have our runways in place. So up on the objects window, I'm going to sim objects. And sometimes it takes a second to load in, but I want to tick all on the packages. I'm simply going to tap in sock to get me into the ballpark. And down here at the bottom is a wind sock. I'm going to tick on it and add. And move it into place. This looks like a good location to add a helipad. So up on the objects window, I'm going to change from sim object to helipad. And you have options of circle, medical, H, or square. I will go with the square. I will tick add. And I'll use the gizmo and translate to move it into position. And I'm also going to rotate with the gizmo, get it facing in the orientation I want. So I want to add some lights around this helipad. And I'm going to change from helipad to scenery. I'm going to type in GBZ because that's the package from flightsim.to and it also has lights in it. I'm going to go with the green light. So with GBZ green light selected on the objects window, I'm going to add. And with translate, I'm going to move it in the corner. And I'm simply going to duplicate. Add the duplicate in this corner. And I'm going to duplicate again. I'm going to cover all four corners and the center.
I'm going to dim the lights and see how this looks. These lights do have a finite distance in which they can be viewed. And once you get a certain distance from them, you can't see them. So I'm going to add a warm light over the top. You could add mast out here if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm going to add an overhead light, which is invisible, but it does radiate light. And to do that on the objects window, I'm going to type in light. And now I'm going to look for a warm medium light, which is in the scenery library. Light warm medium and tick on add. This light has to be raised to function. So on the properties window, I'm going to remove snap to ground. And now I can raise the light up and get a small amount of light so that I can see the helipad. And while I'm on scenery, I'm going to add a couple of hangers here. And this appears to be some sort of office building. I will see if I can find something appropriate. The first thing I want to do is draw a polygon around this area and exclude buildings to ensure that the AI does not generate a building here. I don't want that since I'm adding my own. On the objects window, I'm going to polygon. And I'll draw a polygon around this location and double click to end the polygon. And on the properties window, I'm going to buildings, exclude all. And now that ensures me nothing will be generated. On the objects window, I'm going back to scenery. And I'm going to find a hanger appropriate for these two locations. I have decided to put open hangers here. And this is another package that I found on flightsim.to. Let me rotate it into position. And translate to move. And we have some extra space so I can scale this up a bit. And now to duplicate on the other side. I'm simply going to tick on this object which is already sized and hit duplicate and tick duplicate on the scenery editor. And now all I have to do is rotate. And to make this fun, why not put a CJ4 into the hangers? So I want to go back to Sim Objects, type in CJ4. I have my selection of CJ4, so I will just go with a global livery. I will add. And it takes a second for it to load in. Now that it's loaded in, I'm going to use the gizmo to position it and orientate it.
And the Cessna 172 is small enough I can put two in here. And if memory serves me, these hangars have internal lights. So let's turn the lights down and see. That's nice. Now I'm going to search for a building to fill this spot. On the objects window, I'm going back to scenery. Tick all. I can type gen underscore building and it will give me just general buildings. So we'll see how these look. And why not add an American flag here? I can type in flag and see all sorts, but there's an animated American flag, which looks pretty good. Looks like a good spot for it. I will add some airport lighting here just to light the general area up. On the objects window still on scenery, I will type in mast and type 7 works fine. And if we want to get a little fancy, we can add a spot to the American flag. And I'll do the same thing I did with the helipad. And again, remove snap to ground. And there we go, the flag is lit. I want to get the lights set to where the lights come on, but I can still see. And of course, I should save the scenery. One of the things I like to do is add a light at the windsocks. So I need to find the windsocks at this airport, including the one I added. And the light I'm going to use may not be available to you, but there is a chocolate light available to me that I like to put on windsocks. So let's save the scenery. I want to add a start location to this helipad. So down here on Smyrna in the scenery editor, I want to tick on this. Expose the helipad. Open the properties. And I want to add a start. I'll name this KMQY helipad. And with the start location added, I'll use the gizmo to orientate the direction the helicopter will be in. And that looks fine to me. Now let's save the scenery. And on the project editor, I want to tick on the project, expose the information in the inspector and build the final package. The package is complete and in the corner we can see we have no additional errors. So I can exit out of the console and exit out of the tools. And now I will open up the community folder and I will open up the working scenery folder. 
and here is KMQY and I want to open this scenery folder I want to open the packages folder I want to tick on the package and copy and paste in the community folder and now let's restart the simulator to pick up the new package and with the simulator restarted let's go to the airport I will stay in developers mode so I can use the developer camera to move around and as we zoom around you can see we have our runway start locations we still have our ramps and now we have a helipad so let's try the helipad Bell looks fine to me And since we did not mess with our comm, we still should have all of our services available. As you can see, all the comm is still working. So let's take a look around. It looks like that helicopter is setting in a good start location, so I'm pleased with that. The runways that we added look very good. All the taxiways are still intact. There is the windsock I added. Now let's turn the lights down and see how it looks at night. And you can see the hangar, the flag, and the lights that I added. So I think we're good to go. And that is how you edit an existing airport. I had two requests for this video. One was specific. The viewer wanted to change the materials and widen the runway. And I covered that. The second viewer was non-specific, So I'm not sure what this person was wanting to see. However, I will maintain this package. And should I get a quest in addition to what I've done today, I can go in and pick this up and take care of any request. And as always, I appreciate you watching Patriot 6. If you're not a subscriber, I would appreciate you subscribing because I do videos as often as necessary. And I'm very good to update videos once they become dated. And as SDK changes, the videos do become dated as the methods change. So I have been known to do redos and go in and mark the older videos as outdated and point people to the better process. And I hope to see you soon in this Patriot 6 saying goodbye.